the local news. I'm Mike Myzak with the local news. We're here at Independence Hall in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We're going to ask them. <laughs> we're at Independent. <laughs>
Erica. And uh, do you live here in Philly? I do. I've lived here for uh, 12 years and in the greater Philadelphia area for my entire life. Are you proud to uh, live in the same city as the building where the nation was founded, Independence Hall? What does that make you feel standing here right now, looking over there, thinking, oh, how about that? <laughs> um, yeah, it probably reeked in there. <laughs> it smells crazy in that Independence Hall. I know it smells crazy. <laughs> um, proud though? Not particularly. I'm uh, I'm more proud of the people who uh, who built it from the ground up uh, and and made it what it is today, and not landlords. <laughs> I'm talking about uh, the uh, the hardworking. Uh, immigrants and uh, enslaved people. Important thing is, is that uh, these old fuddy duddies are not that important. So, <laughs> what do you think about uh, this? Uh, is the second year since Philadelphia has declared Columbus Day as Indig Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, what do you? How do you? What do you feel about that? Are you Italian? I am Italian American. Um, Honestly, uh, I, I think that as far as Columbus comporting into Italian American history is uh, a little bit inaccurate is, as far as um, the diaspora of Italian immigrants to America kind of got lumped in and everyone kind of thinks that you know all the same foods and the same uh, cultural things come from all come from Italy but Italy's more of a, co a collection of smaller countries within it the northern Italians are the big Columbus fans I'm southern Italian <laughs> <a fucking> loser. <laughs> so it was, so isn't he he's from Genoa so isn't that isn't he closer to Swiss than Italian I would say so yeah they're a bunch of narcs up there honestly <laughs> what makes the south so much better um, I would say uh, first of all we're sexier uh, secondly is that the the food is a lot uh, better uh, Italian food as we know it in America it's kind of like uh, Italian food in Italy, but without any laws or, you know, there's all sorts of rules, cultural rules that you have to follow with Italian food there that kind of get thrown out the window the further south you go. Like some places are like, oh, you can't wash your vegetables or you can't use garlic or whatever. And that's bullshit. <laughs> there's a place in Italy that says don't use garlic. Uh, it's, it's like a region by region thing. So there could be for all we know. But yeah, they're like. That's the thing about Italian cooking is that the Italian chefs are, are all kind of limited by these by these cultural rules, but the second it's Italian American cooking goes out the window. They're and they're without restraints, they can do whatever they want, and that's when Italian food really shines. Is chicken parm real? It's as real as it gets. <laughs> no, but um well, I mean, I guess so. It's, it's not, maybe not necessarily a fried chick like a chicken cutlet as we imagine it, but um but certainly there are you know, it's it's an amalgamation of different foods that did come from from Italy. That uh, um, you know, the Italian Americans get here, they realize, oh snap, they don't have this delicious ingredient. What can I use instead? And that's where we get chicken parm in Italian American cuisine. What do you think about the the bell, the Liberty Bell? Why is it? Why do people care about it? I think because it has just been incorporated into the symbology of uh, Philadelphia generally. Um, it's, I will say though, it's a lot smaller than people think it is. It's a little disappointing, really. It's kind of like uh, seeing the Mona Lisa in person. It's just like, eh, all right, I see that. Is it just a crappy little bell with good PR? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the hype team behind the Liberty Bell is ro very robust. Are you ever embarrassed about the crack? <laughs> no. <laughs> all right, anything else to add here before we bid you adieu? Go birds. Thank you. Erica then brought us to a historical cemetery, St. Peter's Episcopal Churchyard. In this cemetery are buried eight chieftains from the Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio area who came to Philadelphia to negotiate boundaries with George Washington. They became stricken with smallpox and died shortly thereafter. It is not known where they are buried in the churchyard. I'm Mike 
Mizek with the local news. On location in South Philadelphia, I'm in Marconi Park, and we're here to cover the Columbus Day Parade. Let's see what's happening. And I'm with Chris. Chris and Chris, you're a Philadelphia Italian guy. Yeah, I'm into. I'm a Polish, but I was raised by Italian. Yeah, I'm a Italian person. Yeah, I like Italian. Yeah. So, what does Columbus Day mean to you? Columbus Day means anything. Celebration. Um, what he did for our country. What he did for Italy. That's what I know. That's why now. What do you think about the the statue situation uh, here with the? Uh, Boarding over it. What do you think about that? No, that's wrong. I, I'm totally against that. He's not racist. He was just out to help people out. He's not. No. No. So you think the statue should be uncovered? Yes, it should be. That's just their pride. They came to America. My grandparents came from Italy. And they deserve to have that statue shown. That's showing their pride. That's how I feel about it. So you'd like to see the uh, the boards taken down? Yeah, I like the car, but they did. But they should be taken down because he was not racist. That's why I say, even though he did slavery, but no, he should be showing. That's why. That's their heart. That's their right to have this play. What do you think about the Phillies' victory against the Cardinals last night? Uh, I was really good. I'm really happy for them. Did you watch the game? No, I didn't watch it. But I heard about it. Yes. Yeah. Anything else on your mind before we say goodbye to you? 
No, thank you very much. I love South Philly. Italy rules. South Philly rules. That's all I see. Well, thank you very much for your time. Whoop. <laughs> Have a good day, buddy. has removed the statue of former mayor Frank Rizzo overnight. It stood in front of a municipal building that was right across the street from City Hall. The statue of the former mayor and police commissioner was placed in a secure storage area by the Department of Public Property, where it will remain until there is a plan to either donate, relocate, or otherwise dispose of it altogether. Rizzo was known for aggressively policing black and gay people in the 1960s and 70s and was considered an icon amongst the conservative groups. But many Philadelphians say that the statue represents racism, bigotry, and police brutality. It, in response to the statue's removal, the city's mayor called the move, quote, the beginning of the healing process for our city. And, you know, I got to say, Vlad, for years, mayors have been promising to remove that statue. And there was, you know, robust pushback. I think there was a recent um, petition, uh, 20,000 people wrote, saying that they wanted the statue to stay put. It's the only statue of a mayor in the city of Philadelphia. And one thing that the mayor, the current mayor, uh, Kenny, said about the statue that was part of the challenge in moving it is that no one wanted to take it. And they simply could not find find mm. a place to put it, not to mention it's expensive to move and place somewhere else. But um, it had been the target, uh, um, kind of a, a magnet, if you will, during these um, uh, these protests here in Philadelphia. At one point, protesters surrounding it, trying to pull it down. It weighs 2,000 pounds. That wasn't going to happen. It had been heavily graffitied over the last few days. And Mayor Kenny just decided, you know, it, the moment is now. Let's just remove this altogether. And deal with the problem of what to do with it later. My name is Mike and I'm here with Monet Sunshine. Monet and Sunshine and at the Italian festival, the Columbus Day Festival. What does Columbus Day mean to you guys? It means a day of basically Columbus coming over and he's like, this is our land. I'm going to take it over and I hope you guys appreciate it. But anyway, I really, you know, it's his, his, it's history. And even though we're Italian and he wasn't, I'm so thankful that we were able to have something like this today because we don't have many things that are family oriented. South Philly has been corrupted, unfortunately, God bless. But we need more love in this city, and I believe this brings people together. Uh, uh, Columbus, uh, what does Columbus Day mean to you? It means a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty young right now. I'm 18, and it means all that. But look what we did here. A lot of people came here the other night because we're not allowed to go near the statue or anything like that. But we painted it these colors, of course. Well, Jessica and Yuki, so Christopher Columbus has been in that box, the statue that is, for more than two years. And then suddenly someone put the colors of the Italian flag on it this past weekend. 
The plan to relocate the Christopher Columbus statue is still knotted and tied up in litigation. The wooden box hiding the piece of art got a paint job over the weekend resembling the Italian flag. But there's no covering or boxing up the deep feelings. Some want Columbus here, others say get rid of it. I think they should just remove the boards and let us live our lives. South Philly's a great place. We wanted it to go away. So it should definitely stay boxed. The statue became a flashpoint for civil unrest in 2020. The mayor's office announced plans to relocate it, but then came the lawsuits, and so the boxed up statue has stood in limbo. A lone police SUV is parked here, but all day, the mood has been calm. I haven't seen anything. It's been pretty quiet out here. No controversies today? I have no, not today. The colors of the Italian flag appeared following a request to cover up graffiti on the Columbus box. Councilman Mark Squilla said the day historically celebrated the triumphs and challenges of the Italian community. He contends the city created unnecessary tension when declaring the day Indigenous People's Day. Why would you take that day away? Away from a group of people and then give it to another group of people. And to think that elected officials think that's okay to do is really insulting. We're back live in Marconi Plaza with the exception of some signs that have been planted here on the fence and some folks coming out and taking photos and TikToks. It has been relatively quiet. Meanwhile, the lawsuits still pending, no ruling from the state's court. Once that does happen, though, the city tells us they will plan to move forward with a relocation. Of course, what is decided in those lawsuits will matter greatly. Because it means a lot to us. I mean, South Philly means a lot. We're all Italian. Most of us are Italian, not all of us. But we all come together. We all meet as a group. It's just a great day for all of us. That's it. That's mostly it. When you say South Philly's been corrupted, what, uh, what do you mean by that? What I mean by that is, unfortunately, there's a lot of crime in our city. And it's not just about race. We need to band together because it, we are a sitter, city of brotherly love, and that's how we should be looked at. And I want that back. I want my children to be able to go into a school and, not, and feel comfortable and not worry about gangs and guns and anything like that. I want us all to come together, and that's what it's all about. Uh, so with the statue controversy, you, you, this situation, uh, most people I've talked to, they don't like it, uh, don't like the half measure. And they don't want the statue taken down. They want the statue to stand. Uh, what's your take? My opinion, I think it should stay personally, but like my opinion means nothing. But I mean, it's been here for so long, and now it all comes out of nothing. Like it comes out of nowhere. They all want to take it away for no reason. Like it's been here. It was no problem before. It shouldn't be a problem now. I think it's beautiful that it's here. I walk by it every morning to go to work. It's amazing. That's it. That's all. Any thoughts on Indigenous Peoples Day? Uh, yeah, so I believe the Philly government voted to uh, celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day on Columbus Day, and tomorrow there will be an Indigenous Peoples Day celebration in uh, Treaty Park. I believe it should be a, a, a celebration for everybody. I agree that everybody should be off. It's nice to have everybody come together. And unfortunately, I know some, uh, you know, in the past that history is that Columbus was a part of slavery and all that. I am not for that. I just want peace and I want us all to come together. So it's a beautiful day. If we have law, we can get to do things with families again. That's what it means. Okay, uh, oh, Doctor, what do you think about Dr. Oz versus John Fetter? So I work for Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and I worked for Penn. I don't believe Dr. Oz is a very good candidate. Um, I want somebody that knows the people, that understands our dilemma and will fight for us like hell. And I don't think he's it, but you know what? You know, you give everybody a fair chance. I will gladly hear you out, and I want to see what you have to bring to the table. But I will vote for you. But I believe that, you know, we should do what's right for Philly. Uh, any thoughts on John Fetterman? I hope he's a great candidate. You know, from what I've seen in the, in the um, commercials, he's a great candidate. That's what I want somebody to, like, go to the table and, and represent me. So I hope he is that person, but... Again, I can't speak for anybody. I need to see all the facts. Uh, thoughts on Biden or Trump? I don't have too much. I'm 18 now. I just turned 18. I don't have an opinion yet. I didn't get the vote yet, so I, I can't say anything too much about that. That's really it. So you feel like you, you have to inform yourself more before, and you got time. And the facts and all that, of course, like the next upcoming president and all that. I, I got to learn all that. But so far, I don't stand by Biden, of course, but like, I'm with him, so like I don't know. It's not I don't appreciate what he's doing sometimes, but like 
I'm with him. That's it. I really don't have to say. I'm 18. Just started learning all that stuff, politics and all that. So still learning to a full. He should do more. He should do more. You guys hyped him up. I was one that voted for him. So let's see what you could do, buddy. You've been silent. All right. Um, any other thoughts before we say goodbye? If you guys can come visit Philly, we have the best health care and the best food. Come or welcome. Cheese steaks all the way. American Whiz, fried onions. You got it. And how do you? And, and if someone wants to order that, what are they? Cheese steak Whiz, fried onions, American. That's it. Whiz, That's all. Whiz. 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 I'm Mike, and I'm here with... My name is Tyler. And my name is Mike. Tyler and Mike here at the Columbus Day Festival. What does Columbus Day mean to you? I don't know. I'm just here to celebrate with all my friends and family, you know, just trying to have a good time, come out, celebrate. It's hot out, you know? Just be whatever. I would say same, but, like, I was, like, born in the mummer, so, like, I'm usually just, like, here to, like, celebrate with the mummers. But, like, this year was different because my man, he passed away. Different this year, you know, he died recently. It's just different without him, you know, it's just not the same. But yeah, we're just here to celebrate, have a good time. Yeah, in remembrance of your friend a little bit too today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, with the mummers, well, for someone who doesn't know, what, what are the mummers? Um, so I guess like a bunch of people who practice for like the New Year's Brigade and stuff and, and just have a good time, you know. And then there's like 12 like brigades right now in the Fancy Brigade. So. Yeah, we're just trying to have a good time. What do you guys think about the whole statue situation? You have thoughts on that? Um, that statue's been oh sorry, that statue's been uh, barricaded for a little bit. I don't know when they're gonna take it down, but yeah, it's just been there for a while. Yeah, pretty much what he said. It's just been um, it's just been barricaded because of like all the protests and stuff. So. Uh, any thoughts on Indigenous Peoples Day tomorrow? Uh, no, actually. I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's new. Um. Uh, what are you guys' hobbies? Hobbies, you know, I like to go outside a lot. I like to ride bikes, you know. It's just I like to be out with friends, you know? Yeah, same here. I don't ride a bike. I ride my scooter, so. Yeah. 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 You guys play games at all? Yeah, I play some video games, you know, Xbox on top, you know, play the console. What uh, what games in particular? Um, Fortnite. Fortnite's going downhill, but, you know, I still play it a little bit. I be playing COD and, like, Mortal Kombat. And Fall Guys. Oh, Fall Guys. Let's go. How many crowns? Oh, they don't have crowns anymore, do they? Well, they do have crowns, and there's also, like, a crown pass. I have over 100 now because, like, it's, like, just new to me because, like, it just became, like, available for Xbox. And I put, yeah. What's the hardest course on Fall Guys? Uh, I'm going to keep it a bean. It's, like, you know, like, those pads, like, the lily pads and, like, the rhinos? It'd be that one. Yeah, it'd be that one. It's rhino lily pad shit. Okay, 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 okay. Oop, oop. Oop, oop. Okay. Okay, two rhinos. I wonder if that mummer kid is in here right now. Woo! 
Uh, all right. Uh, anything? Any other thoughts uh, you guys have before we say goodbye? No, that's it. Thank you. No, that's it. Thank you for having me. Though. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Good interview. What does Columbus Day mean to you? Um, well, growing up, it's always been kind of a an Italian uh, heritage celebration for the most part. We celebrate our Italian heritage um, and kind of reflect on our past and in our present and future, of course. There, there's Italian Americans in. Every trade, every, you know, part of life, you know, just like every other nationality. I don't think Italians really flaunt their nationality at people. It's kind of like a personal pride, I guess you can say. But we kind of like, I guess, take pride in the fact that we appreciate all nationalities you know uh do you have any opinions on the statue situation here uh my opinion is i believe the mayor of philadelphia is purposely keeping it boarded up like that i'm not sure exactly why but it does seem to be a blatant disrespect i'm not sure if there's inside uh, hard feelings or something but as far as that statue that was a gift by the Italian government uh, in the late 1800s and it was kind of a uh, you know an admiration for America what it was becoming by the Italian people and I believe at that time Italians didn't necessarily migrate here in droves yet. I believe it was probably a few decades after that, if I'm correct. But it was, a, it was a gift, it was an appreciation and an admiration for America. And it was basically, you know, this is where America was kind of founded, you know, with the Declaration of Independence and all that. And, uh, and I believe that's why the Italian government sent it here to Philadelphia. There's you know, controversy obviously going on uh, about the history of Christopher Columbus and stuff like that. And that's definitely things, you know, you have, definitely have to think, take things into consideration. But uh, all in all, uh, I don't believe that statue is offensive to anybody. It, it's an art piece, it's a historical art piece that somebody created and it has a story behind it. And uh, if somebody is offended by Christopher Columbus himself, at least they can appreciate 
the fact that there's people that do appreciate this statue here. There's, I don't think that uh, it should be taken down. You know, it's been here for a long time. I think people should just accept it. People don't like it, just keep on going. There's plenty of monuments here in, the, in uh, Philadelphia that uh, is dedicated to all walks of life, all nationalities, all, all um, genders and all of that. You know, we have the Gaberhood, you know, that's devoted, it's basically named, you know, devoted to whatever, different, you know, we, we, we're, we accept all walks of life. Um, the, yeah, basically we've got the same uh, situation happening in Pittsburgh right now exactly with the statue. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the same thing. We have it covered up. It's actually the same lawyer working on both cases, the, the, the Philly lawyer. Um, uh, but uh, Indigenous Peoples Day, any thoughts on that? I believe that we should definitely celebrate indigenous, indigenous people. You know, uh, Native Americans, of course, we should celebrate them, not just one day. You know, And I'm not offended that Christopher Columbus Day was chosen. I'm not offended. It doesn't bother me. I'll celebrate you know, and all you know, Native Americans and Italian Americans. Italian, this isn't the only <clears throat> celebration that it, Italians get into. You know, it's not just a single day. So it's not like, you know, if they try to take this away from us, you know, we're, you know, lost or something. But we'll continue to celebrate Columbus Day and you know, perhaps in the future we'll kind of you know, smooth things out to make it more acceptable in other people's eyes. So why should uh, Philadelphians support uh, the Republican candidates for governor, Congress, Senate, etc.? Because they will help our inflation. We're, they're pro-life. Uh, the gas prices, the fracking needs to come back to Pennsylvania so that our gas prices come down. And two years ago, our country was in a lot better shape than it is now. So I believe the Republicans need to come back into office. Oh, what do we think about the, the, the statue issue here? Any opinions on that? Yes, I do. Um, we are Italian-Americans heritage, very proud of our heritage, and Christopher Columbus did a lot of good things for, for us, and we believe that history should not be erased. We should always move forward, and we should respect Christopher Columbus and get the statue out in the open. It's something that's exploded on social media. Accusations that Republican Senate candidate Mehmet Oz abused animals, including puppies, during medical research. In an exclusive interview with KDK political editor John Delano, Giselle Fetterman, wife of the Democratic candidate, doubles down on the charge. Are you saying that he, Dr. Oz killed puppies? The allegations say that the puppies were handled in an extremely cruel way. They were left to die in garbage bags. Um, they actually violated several animal welfare laws. Giselle Fetterman admits she has no firsthand knowledge of Dr. Oz's alleged animal cruelty doing medical research when he led the Cardiovascular Institute at the Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center in New York. But reports from Billy Penn, a newsletter of WHYY Public Radio in Philadelphia, and Jezebel, an AG online magazine, have social media on fire. It's really, I mean, it's heartbreaking to read. Dr. Catherine Delorto, a veterinarian who worked with Oz at Columbia, 
says he used dogs to model human cardiac failure, speeding up their heart rates, then applying experimental treatments, including surgery, to them. Quote, he was the principal investigator on these experiments, Del Orta told Public Radio. They, the dogs, suffered quite a bit prior to death, and a lot of them were just found dead in cages, unquote. At the time, an investigative committee of Columbia did find that puppies were, quote, not properly sedated and were euthanized with outdated euthanasia solution, unquote. Columbia ultimately paid a $2,000 fine, but Oz is not mentioned in the citation. I reached out to the Oz campaign for a response on animal cruelty charges, but they had only this response, quote, who is Giselle? Is she running for something, unquote? Marconi Park, and who am I speaking to? Dan Kettner. What does Columbus Day mean to you? Uh, a patriot, a true patriot, not the phony crap they're pushing. Indigenous, what the hell's indigenous? They're Americans, just like Confederate soldiers. They were Americans and they get a tree like crap. Uh, and uh, what do you think about uh, the statue being covered up right now? I think it's... It's a sin. It's un-American. I mean, it's, it's terrible. Taking statues, God, it's an act of terrorism. It's violence. And it's stupid. What do you think about the people who want to take the statue down completely? Oh, I'd like that. I won't say it. I won't say it. So, uh, you don't think this is a good uh, mid middle solution to have it painted with the Italian flag? No, it's half-assed. It's, you, no, you got to... Bring it back. It was here before they started the deep state. So, so what do you think about uh, Dr. Oz or John Fetterman? Uh, I like Dr. Oz. Fetterman's a joke. I think he's a spoiled kid and he would do nothing but hurt this uh, state. He's trying to turn into another New Jersey or New York. Not a good idea. And opinions of Donald Trump? I support Donald Trump. He did a lot for this country. The economy was good. The borders were safe. And gas was cheap. He cares about Americans. Anything else on your mind you'd like to add before we say goodbye? Yeah, don't get vaccinated. Don't get vaccinated. Thank you very much for your time. Indigenous? What the hell's indigenous? What the hell's indigenous? What the hell's 
indigenous name used just for us because everybody is indigenous. Everybody is from some place, and they should all know their history. I'm Mike, and I'm here with uh, Teresa Johnson. Teresa Johnson, who are you here with? No, I'm here with the uh, Lenape or Delaware Nation. I come from Southern Ontario, Canada. So you traveled here for Indigenous Peoples Day? Yes, one of the reasons. We stopped in Ohio yes, uh, the other day for Saturday for an event over there. Then we came here for this event. Do you follow the, you follow the celebrations uh, kind of around your general area? I only come to this area because it's my homeland. And uh, I love coming here. I was invited last year, so I came here, and uh, I'm enjoying it. I'm going to keep coming. I'm going to try bringing more people back to, to learn, to teach them our history. So that's what I did. I went out and learned the history myself, and, and, uh, and I'm really lucky to be able to meet people, and I've been meeting a lot of people here to keep in touch with. So for um, uh, a Native American person trying to find their family history, are there any unique challenges that you can th that you can think of? Well, uh, I figure mine is a lot easier because the Lenape are the well, most well do documented people in the United States. The Mohican, the Muncie, the Lenape, and the Nanakoke and the Shawnees. They are the well most well documented in the United States. So it's fairly easy to follow the family trees through their records, through the missionary records. So that was a big help for me because I did my family tree for years and then I thought well I'm gonna get on the road and follow this Lenape trail and see where it leads me and I'm still trying to find that, all of that trail I've only seen a few a few spots there's thousands much spots more to see yet what is the importance of knowing our history why is it so important it's us it's, we're part of Mother Earth you know it's it's our homeland feelings then on Christopher Columbus he didn't know what he was doing <laughs> you know uh, with European contact it was um, terrible because um, they brought a lot of disease here and wiped out a lot millions of Indians and then they, we had to go through massacres and I go back to tedious Kung. he's got a statue here in Philadelphia that, that it's not him but it represents him and he's one of my ancestors. So I want to come down here and learn more about him. Where, if I can find out where his house was, because it was the, the white people that um, killed him and then burnt him up in his house. And you know, I'm in touch with the spirits here, all along the East Coast here where we lived. And uh, sometimes the odd one follows me back home, so. So it's really something for me because I work with the medicines, I work with the spirits. So it's real. I, I love it. I love doing it. Oh, when you when you say the medicines, uh, what does that entail? Natural medicines, natural medicines that that we have used for thousands of years, and still using today. I make other medicines from that because I work with plants and I make lotions out of them and salves. But then I also work with ceremonial medicines as well. I work with the language. I'm not a fluent speaker, but I read the books to kids. I can understand it when I read it. I can understand it when I see it. But I don't know how to really do sentences. Uh, what are your opinions on, there's a Columbus statue uh, controversy in Philadelphia, and we've talked to people yesterday at the Marconi Park about it, and today we're talking talking to people at this celebration. Um, I think the mayor wants to remove it, but a lawyer has a suit to keep it there and uncover it. Oh, wow. Right. I'll have to talk to that mayor. <laughs> See what he has to say. I did contact him because I was trying to get a hold of the group that has that tedious Kung statue, and they weren't answering me. They weren't answering my calls or anything. So I contacted the mayor here, and he made them contact me. So that was great, because I told him, I said, I'm a direct ancestor. I said, if anything, I, you should be talking to me. <laughs> and instead, they were talking to that Eastern Lenape group of Pennsylvania, and they're no connection to us whatsoever. So I wanted to make that very clear, and. And so now the group is going to meet with me. Oh, I just love being here. And, you know, the people are so friendly and, and they're so interested in learning what, you know, what, what we have to tell. And 
I find it great. I love it out here. Where I come from, we live in a flat farmland. And out here, you got lakes and mountains, and I just love it. I've always been drawn to this area, and I never knew why. Because when I was young, I didn't know my total history. And I always wanted to come to New York City, and I never knew why. And then it wasn't until I learned the history of our people. I said, that's why, because it's in my blood. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And have a great Indigenous Peoples Day. Thank you. I'm Mike Mizak with the local news. Today, we're in Shackamaxon Park in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, along the Delaware River. Let's see what's happening. I'm here with I, I'm here at Indigenous Peoples Day with my friend Roger, famous musician Roger Harvey. Have you considered maybe you've been fooled by the people you swore telling the truth, even though they've never done nothing for you? What a weird hell to die. Uh, and Roger. Um, what do you think about Indigenous Peoples Day? What do you think about uh, the, the the city declaring it the official holiday on the, the day that was traditionally Columbus Day? Well, it's nicer than Columbus Day. We're here in Penn Treaty Park. This is where William Penn famously signed probably one of the first trees with Indians. We all know how that uh, that went for Indigenous people. But no reservations in Pennsylvania currently. Uh, so but then again, there's all that history at the Carlisle School. Um, but you know, I know you guys are here to take in Columbus Day in the in the wacky city of Philadelphia. So it's nice to see this happening. You live down by Marconi Park, and uh, so would you say it's a very Italian part of Philadelphia? Yeah. Definitely. South Philly, I'm, I mean, I don't know much about exactly what goes on down that far south, but where I live in South Philly, it's uh, traditionally very Italian. Now it's also a Hispanic neighborhood and a Vietnamese neighborhood, but it is interesting. I had to wake up early to move because of the Italian American festival outside of the Catholic Church by my house, and I had to wake up early to move, the, move my truck. I knew I'd have to get up, like, because they'd be out there, you know? And I, I figured because it's Italian-Americans, they're going to take, the police especially, are going to take it very seriously. So I woke up, and I was, like, right on time. And I was going out. It was, like, 8 a.m. And there was three city tow trucks just, like, surrounding my truck. 
And I was like, only for the Italian Americans in this community would they be like that on time. And all these guys just kind of like looked at me when I was walking to my truck. And I just, I was kind of proud of myself because it was kind of early. So I was like, oh, I'm right on time. And I see like cops and all this shit. I just walked and they all just like looked at me getting my truck and they were like, all right. My favorite part was the saints, I think. Like they had these sculptures of saints and they were walking them through the streets and they were just had money taped all to them. I think they were collecting money, but I just thought it was an interesting symbol. Uh, so wait, uh, uh, images of saints with no, no, like sculptures, like, and they were like carrying them from the church, and they just had money just taped all to the outside of their body. I don't. Do you know any of this cultural significance behind? It? I'm Catholic, and I've not heard anything like this. Uh, oh, in America. We love money. <laughs> I, I think that it, it, I think they were just doing like a collection, but to me it was just kind of taken in my, my neighborhood and how different it would be if the, my Hispanic neighbors or my Vietnamese neighbors had a block party. I was just taking, in, taking note of all this kind of symbolism. Oh, uh, white people are wilding out here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big time. What's your dog's name? This is Sister Bobby. What's, what's the breed here? Uh, she's not Italian-American. She's a, she's a Australian cattle dog. What do you think? There's an election going on right now. What do you think about uh, John Fetterman? What do you think about that guy? John Fetterman? Well, as you know, we once had an experience with John Fetterman. Me and you? Yeah, should we talk about it? Um, nine years ago, I got to play, well, you know, it's kind of a last minute thing in Pittsburgh. And Fetterman had a big presence in Pittsburgh at that time. And now he's got such a big presence in Pennsylvania. And of course, we want him to win because he's up against Dr. Oz. As I'm thinking about when I was playing the show in Pittsburgh, and I was trying to promote Fetterman as the midterms are coming up. And I said something positive about Fetterman. You remember this? And yeah, I said something on stage and somebody in Pittsburgh was like, kind of heckled me. Not an Oz supporter, but was just like, and I think Fet Fetterman's a pretty great candidate for, and a great representative of Pennsylvania and hopefully will represent more of America in the, in the future. And he will win. And when we played the, uh, the, the thing, what, what, was the, what was that all about? So that was when he was doing, um, I believe he called his house in Braddock the gay marriage capital of Pennsylvania at that time. This was before we had expanded marriage rights. And so we got a call that morning about providing music for a wedding at his house. And so we showed up. and. It was Levi's was involved in it. We don't have to go into the nitty gritty of that, but uh, I was familiar with that and I didn't really know what we were doing. I just uh, knocked on the door and John Fetterman op opened the door and I was like, oh, okay, and I put it together because I knew he was doing that in his house at, the th at that time. And uh, did we get paid for that or no? Uh, very little, but I mean at the time, you know, I always tell this story because we cut that money in half. And I always tell the story now, when Levi's called me, this doesn't have to do with John Fetterman, when Levi's called me, and they, I think they offered me like 100 or 200 bucks to like go like last minute roll out there. And I remember thinking at that time, $200? Like they're gonna pay us 200 bucks? And now in hindsight, if Levi's asked me to do something, I'd. I'd probably ask for a little bit more. Uh, I my recollection is that they said they were going to pay two hundred dollars, and then they paid a hundred fifty dollars. That sounds about right. Yeah. We thought we were both going to get a hundred dollars, and then. Would have been huge, right? Oh yeah, I was like, fucking starving saying, at the time. I'm not saying that like a hundred bucks wouldn't be huge to me today, but. Definitely a different negotiation style as I've moved forward, especially with large corporations, what I might ask, you know? And how I might handle when they say, I'm sorry, we don't have 200. 
we only have 150. That's some bullshit. Yeah. But uh, as we've discussed, that's all Levi's. Uh, no, we're standing in front of the Walt Whitman Bridge in the Delaware River. Um, Dr. Oz, is he from Pennsylvania? Is that Pennsylvania? Uh, th no, that's Jersey. That's New Jersey? That's where he's from. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you uh, from Philadelphia? I am, yes. Uh, uh, what does uh, Indigenous Peoples Day mean to you? To me, I mean, myself, I don't know if you can tell, I'm Asian, so I mean, I, you know, can relate to uh, just being an immigrant. I guess myself, I know it's different, but still being minority, you know, so that's why I came. I didn't even know this was happening, so. Yeah. What are your thoughts? What are your uh, just general thoughts on? changing it from Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day? Hey, I mean, I can for sure understand it, get down with it. I know, like, you know, how it's been going with, like, Ju Juneteenth, you know, they're, they're definitely making it very much so diverse, which I like. You know, the, the I'm off, you know, myself, so I, you know, I can appreciate 
it being indigenous as opposed to Columbus Day, for sure. As I have nothing against it. Yeah. Any opinions on Columbus himself? I mean, hey, I, I learned about him historically just like anybody else did. So nothing like, you know, besides what I, you know, have known historically. But, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> so I have no opinion on him. This is Sonny. Whoa, he's fun. <laughs> and Sonny is a golden dude. Yeah, I mean, that's it. I'm out here enjoying the day. Like I said, I'm off. So uh, I'm, I'm just happy to be out here. And I, I think this is a good community event. And I think they should have a lot of this all the time. Celebrating all cultures, for sure. Hell yeah. Do you think Dr. Oz is from over there? Dude, Dr. Oz, I don't know, but he, he has, I see all the commercials on TV. They're, they're very, very entertaining. I see all, like, you know, his opposition. You, you seen them? Yeah. No, I don't give a shit either way, but, I, yeah, he probably is from somewhere. I know he has a lot of property from what I've seen. He has a lot of other uh, estates. <laughs> so that's all I know. <laughs> It was my ancestors that he met. Our creation story says that in the beginning, there was the female entity, Atabe, the cosmic matriarch. And she brought about the miracle of life from her womb. And from her womb was born the spirit of life, Lord of life, Yokahu, the Lord of life, who is represented in our sacred plant, the yucca, and all of those Caribbean people out there who might might be able to recognize what that is, yucca, we eat yucca, and that's our sacred plant. That's like our maize. You know how maize is the sacred plant of my Machinka brothers and sisters? To us, it's yucca, it's a tumor. So this spirit, yucca, who has the name of the yucca? Yucca who? 
His name means soul of the yucca plant. And he, like us, was born out of the womb of Atabe, the cosmic nature. So I'm going to offer this, uh, this prayer to Yokahu, the Lord of Life. from the Council of Three Rivers American Indian Center in Pittsburgh. Oh, awesome. So I have, was asked by the uh, organizers of uh, Indigenous Peoples Day Philly to come and participate and not only to uh, share my insights as a Pittsburgher, but also as a Taino, my tribe, the Taino people were the original first people that were impacted by the colonization process that was begun by Christopher Columbus in 1492, oh, hello, in October of 1492. So to us, October is always a time of mourning, here we go, here we go. a sorry. time of emotions. And uh, it, they felt here in Philadelphia right, so that it would be appropriate to have a Taino to Adamo share because Francis you have you saw this broad range of indigenous people which, represented Adamo, here from Mexicas from Mexico people from the Andes from okay, Peru perfect. and, and also, the local people the like Delaware and Lenape people from here vendors, right here please, in vendors, Philadelphia but uh, she Philly, you know they, the 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 one of the organizers who was a good friend of mine Mabel Negrete who uh, was the last one to, to, to do a presentation there she called me and she said we really would like for you to, to participate. So here I am, representing not only the Pittsburgh Indian Center, but Eugene. also my own people. So what does uh, Indigenous Peoples Day mean to All you? So Indigenous Peoples Day is a refocusing of attention the of from stage. the person that essentially brought death and destruction to the Americas. Because it wasn't just uh, his inclination towards enslaving the people you know the very first thing he said when he got off the ship was Organizers you know these people seem the peaceful and friendly they'll be easy to conquer Volunteers, with 50 soldiers i can conquer all these the people and make them the servants so you know where his mind was at he wasn't a good person so Volunteers, instead of celebrating vendors, this guy to switch especially what to they've accomplished the here in philadelphia which i wish we could accomplish in pittsburgh someday that's our goal in pittsburgh is to have the pittsburgh mayor also declare that there is no more columbus day in pittsburgh and there will be a, a an indigenous people's day like like the mayor did here in philadelphia i know that's you hear that at ganey you're getting called out buddy yeah I, I, that seems like a dream look we've got the backing because both the the previous per, uh, uh, per, per Dudo right. and now are Ganey are both on on track again. to the take that statue down in in uh, in Shenley Park and so we do have the backing but now Please what we need is the organization the that they, these people have way ahead of us here in Philadelphia I mean they're they're organized you can see I mean and so there is a nascent yeah yeah there is a nascent um um baby indigenous people's day effort in pittsburgh that we're working on but we need a lot of help and we are getting a lot of help and collaboration from the indigenous people's day philly two sister cities from the same state and they're giving us the the help so we look forward to having this happen there more. let's do it pittsburgh yes 
Pittsburgh, here we are. I am very proud to be a Pittsburgher. I'm very proud to be a Taino in Pittsburgh. There's not that many Tainos. In Pittsburgh. There's a lot of Tainos right, here in Philadelphia. There's a lot of people Sanders, of Caribbean Warner, ancestry in Philadelphia. There I aren't that many in, in Pittsburgh. But the, the few of us that are there, we like to get together. We get together at the Indian Center up in the North Hills in Dorseyville, and we have our ceremonies, and we'd like to continue that and keep growing that in spite of the fact that we're still dealing with the Columbus Day in Pittsburgh. Well, thank you for your time. It's a pleasure. I'm Mike, and I'm here with... Uh, Caleb. Caleb. And uh, what does Indigenous Peoples Day uh, mean to you? Uh, uh, not much. It's my first time having this holiday off, but, uh, I mean, it's better than Columbus Day as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I mean... Hopefully most people recognize that this was indigenous land at one point and not just a blank space that white people settled. And uh, feelings on Christopher Columbus? Uh, you know, not a great guy, you know, just another Euro dude who happened to find something that he could make a lot of money off of, basically. I don't, my feelings on Columbus are not strong other than not really a good guy. <laughs> Um, how about the, the whole issue with the statue situation in the city? Yeah, I said fucking blow up all those statues. Fuck, like, monuments to white supremacy and European conquest, you know? I don't really feel like they're needed. We have enough uh, memorials to uh, our destructive tendencies existing as is. So, you know good riddance to those statues same with the Rizzo statue fuck it blow it up get rid of it we don't need it you know if there are enough white people walking around to memorialize these incidents as is I mean look I'm not saying like you can't have statues to white dudes or anything but like I think a little more context and uh you know just representation would be uh, appropriate with regards to that and I think uh lionizing you know historical figures that were far more detrimental than we tell ourselves uh, is not a great way to move society forward in general. So, I, you know, I think a statue can be made about whatever, it just has to be appropriately context and, uh, yeah, not a uh, stupid. <laughs> yeah, Indigenous Peoples Day is a better name than Columbus Day, so, I mean, if we're gonna have bullshit holidays, it might as well be a virtue signaling rather than a stupid propping up of uh, historical myths you know that's about it all right well thank you very much no yep. all right i'm here with donna fan boyle and uh donna you are here tabling for the for what cause for the american indian movement woodlands territory and american indian movement grand governing council we support the you know the the main aim group and uh for people who don't know what that is uh what, what would you how would you describe what that is well aim was um created in the 1970s to protect native rights to pr protect native people and to help to bring back the right to practice um, native beliefs, native religious beliefs. Because up until then, um, practicing native cultural traditional ways was outlawed and you could go to jail for that. So AIM, that's one of our main concerns is to make sure that people can practice their traditions without being jailed or, you know, actually back then you could be killed for it. What does Indigenous Peoples Day mean to you and to have a celebration like this? Well, the way I feel is it's uh, about time, and especially that the city of Philadelphia has actually recognized Indigenous Peoples Day, that the schools are closed for Indigenous Peoples Day, and that they're not celebrating, a, you know, Columbus the murderer. Um, actually, we are working with a uh, re representative, Chris Rabb, to make it a federal holiday in uh, Pennsylvania. So it means a lot that, um, you know, that, that Native people are recognized. The people that were here before it was the United States. Uh, what do you think of the whole statue issue, controversy in Marconi Park 
we were talking to people there yesterday, and you know, various opinions. Uh, what do you what do you uh, think about that whole Columbus statue situation? Well, there should not be a monument to honor a murderer and a terrorist. It would be like having a statue for uh, Adolf Hitler, you know. Um, and actually, Christopher Columbus did, you know, I mean, Adolf Hitler learned from Christopher Columbus and from the U.S. for the terroristic treatment of Native people. So, you know, we wouldn't uh, celebrate any other terrorists, and we should not be celebrating Columbus as a terrorist. If they want to keep the statue, they can put it somewhere um, else. And I thought it was very fitting that it was put in a box so that he was in solitary confi confinement. Oh, it's poetic. Exactly, very poetic. He's there, can do no more harm. Now, I don't even know, is he still in the box? Yes, yes. Oh, good, good. That's where he should stay. He just painted it at red, white, and green yesterday, but as an Italian, I kind of don't... I think it maybe should be just painted red and white with a white cross in the middle, because I think he's Swiss. Yes, exactly. Well, it should be that because he was hired really as a as a uh, Christian or a religious faction to subdue and vanquish native people and to um, treat native people as animals and that we should be um, killed if we wouldn't become Christianized or adhere to their religious beliefs. So I think he's more of a religious um, you know, uh, person, like the statue is more for that than for a um, for Italians. I think Italians should have a Italian, you know, Heritage Day, Italian Heritage Month. Find somebody else really good to, uh, you know, to represent the Italian people. Yeah, that's what I think, too. Way better Italians than Christopher Columbus. Even some of the criminals. <laughs> yes, exactly. They, it would be more fitting to have a mafia member. They do have done less damage than Christopher Columbus. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a serious case could be made for that, yes. Uh, so you have another cause uh, that you're uh, um, trying to get out there, and uh, it's for uh, Leonard, the Free Leonard Peltier Movement. And uh, there's a, it's a Leonard Peltier's Walk to Justice. There's a series of rallies in support of Leonard Peltier. And what can you tell us about this? So they have uh, the American Indian Movement in Minneapolis. Uh, Rachel Thunder, she was the one that created this event with the GGC, Grand Governing Council's approval. And so they have walked from Minneapolis, Minnesota and right now they're in Ohio. They've stopped along the way and done rallies, and right now they're in Ohio, and they uh, will be stopping in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and doing a rally. I'm not sure exactly where they will be stopping. It may be where the Christopher Columbus statue used to be, at, or at a government building, and then on to Washington, D.C. So it would be really good to have support and to have people there to educate others and to have the support so that when they get to Washington, D.C., Biden and all those government people can see the, you know, that the support that we have and, and that we show up for this. Yeah, and, and Leonard has been convict, you know, convicted of aiding and abetting um, people who supposedly committed a murder but of two FBI agents, but the people were, went to trial and they were found not guilty. So Leonard is still spending time since 1977 in jail for uh, aiding and abetting people who were found not guilty of a crime. So how can he be guilty of aiding and abetting? Like, who did he aid and abet? You know? Yeah, it, the definition of a political prisoner. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's a political prisoner. He's there as an example. They're holding him up to teach Native American people that, and, and other minorities too, that we will do whatever we can to silence you and to punish you and we will make it so that you are afraid to speak and that's you know so they're keeping him in and, and honestly i think it's illegal what they're doing it's illegal but they can get away with it and when you think about it there were people that went to the capitol on january 6th and they actually killed um police right and how much time are they going to serve for that? Is somebody being, you know, um, 
judged for that? Are they going to spend, seven, you know, are they going to spend 40 years in jail for that? From what I've heard, there's only been, I think the longest sentence was nine years. So, and here's Leonard, not even guilty of a crime. They couldn't even prove the crime. In a situation which many view as self-defense as well. Exactly, yes. And that was, that is why, one of the reasons why they could not um, find these guys guilty of the, the crime with the two FBI agents is because there was a shootout with the FBI agents and they shot first. And it was, they were defending themselves. They were there to defend people, native people who wanted to go back to their traditional ways because um, the traditional ways had been outlawed up until 1978. So. Wait, wait, be still, be still. You got a big spider. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. There's a spider. 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 Well, I also have, I'm a co-founder of the Coalition of Natives and Allies, and we work on the mascot issues. So I've been working in my school district in Bucks County, in the Chamonix School District, they use the term redskin, and I've been working on that for 10 years, and they have spent $500,000 fighting me. 500,000 educational dollars fighting me. And uh, we're not done yet, and they might spend a million dollars, but we're just going to keep going. And yeah, so our group, uh, we're mascot fighters. Yeah, and so is AIM. We fight the mascots as well. So it's just a matter of equal treatment, equal rights. Like, think of us as people and don't do the things to us that you wouldn't do to any other minority. We're not a representative for Caucasians or any other group. We're a representative for ourselves, and we don't make shirts with white people's faces on it and call it white skins you know we are we represent ourselves so no more mascots <laughs> all right well thank you so much for your time and uh will you be at the leonard peltier event in pittsburgh or i won't be there because the next day i'm leaving for mexico so i won't be there but there will be representatives from our group there and um, so you can look for um, Ramona Woods, she'll be there, and uh, Derek Shuck, they're from our group, but there will be tons of uh, AIM there from all different areas, yeah, and lots of supporters. Uh, I want to thank every single one of you for coming out tonight, today. Uh, please give a warm welcome to Eugene Blackrow. I want to invite Eugene Blackrow to the stage. He comes from uh, Pine Ridge, South Dakota, is Oglala, Lakota, and I'm proud to call him my uncle. I'm proud to be part of Indigenous People Day here. I'm one of the advisors, and I'd like to say uh, thank you for all the vendors who are here, all the dancers who are, and all the performers, and uh, all the Machinka dancers that I, they, they all call me uncle too. They call me Tio, so I'm really proud of that because we're all related from all the way from uh, down to uh, South America, Central America, North America, all the way to Alaska. We're all natives of this land. We're not immigrants. You, you guys all know who the immigrant is. Columbus didn't even come to America, but they said he discovered it, you know? And uh, that's why in Pine Ridge, in South Dakota, we got rid of Columbus Day back in the 1990. Uh, Governor Mickelson, uh, him and the uh, Ironclad administration, they got rid of Columbus Day back then. So that was really good. They called it the Year of, Reco Re year of Reconciliation. And uh, I'm proud of that. We got rid of Columbus Day back home and we call it Indigenous People Day too. Land back, you know, everybody, land back. Yeah. Oha, My name is uh, Eugene Black Crow from uh, Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota. And I come here uh, five years ago, and I've been interested in this uh, Indigenous People Day, Philly, because back home uh, we got rid of Columbus Day uh, back in, uh, they, they started working on it in 1989 and 1990. They, uh, they uh, went and uh, got rid of Columbus Day back home in South Dakota, and they call it Indigenous People Day back home. And now I'm over here and I'm 
we still have a Columbus Day, but right here there's Indigenous Peoples Day, and then this is uh, Chief Tanaman's uh, old uh, campground. This is village was here, and his statue should be here instead of uh, William Penn. So one of these days, uh, I'm hoping that they put Chief Tanaman's statue here, so when people come and celebrate his uh, birthday or the date they signed the treaty, people can stand around here like like this. They just have a a lot of people stand here and, you know, offer tobacco and do some prayers for him. But right now he's down there on Market Street and uh, Front Street where you can't even have 10 people standing there, you know. And uh, you can't really uh, pray for him there because there's too much traffic and uh, you'd be holding up traffic if you have a lot of people like this here. So uh, I'd like to see him being moved here where his home, this was his uh, village site here. Uh, may maybe his campfire was here somewhere, you know. We don't know where it is, but maybe it was, you know. So we'd like to, uh, you know, pay our homage to him on his territory, which was right here. This was his land, you know. So. Is there anything happening in Pine Ridge right now you'd like people to know about? Well, uh, they just had a powwow back over there. Instead of uh, Columbus Day, they have indigenous people, they powwow over there. And there, uh, there's more than uh, ten. Uh, there's more than a thousand dancers and uh, more than uh, 22 uh, drummers there. So it's a very big powwow over there. And you know, uh, I'd like to see uh, something like that happening here. You know, because a lot of natives here, you know, they'd like to uh, just like uh, people come up to me and saying, uh, "It's a good thing you told them about." Uh, Chief Tanaman, his home country here, because they'd like to come over and uh, celebrate hit on his land and uh, pray to him or, you know, uh, offer tobacco to his statue and, uh, you know, re recognize their chief. But he's down there, so, you know, they want to bring him over here, so I'd like to help whoever is trying to help me or will help me to pu push the city into helping move the statue over here for next year's uh, Indigenous Peoples Day, or maybe a year after, and then, you know, he, people will be at peace with him, you know. They, they'll have something to come over here instead of down at the busy place, you know. So, uh, that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to uh, uh, th thank uh, everybody that was here, all the vendors and all the people that came to support the vendors and buy Indigenous stuff. and. Uh, you know, pe people like me, you know, I, I made a little, but you know, I just, I don't come here to make a profit. I come here to, you know, meet with the people, the local natives, and uh, like all the machikas, you know, I'm, I'm learning to everybody here, you know, and I, I'm, I'm happy about that, and I want to help them for their cause, whatever their cause m might be, you know, like putting Chief Tanaman here on this station, or where they're watching the Muchikas, you know, practice their own culture. They're, they're all young, and they're practicing their own culture, which was, uh, uh, how do you say, it was banded back a long time ago, just like our sweat lodges and our sun dances were banded a long time ago by the government. But uh, uh, Yeah, and uh, back in the, 1968, I think it was the uh, Congress said, uh, passed a law that, uh, what was that, uh, where we can practice our own religion, Freedom of Religion Act. So we can, out in the open, we can do our sweat lodges, out in the open, we can do our sand dances, out, op out in the open, these uh, machikas can do their uh, Aztec dances, and they have, uh, they, they pray to the four directions just like we do, just as, as Lakota do, you know, and I'm really uh, glad they're doing that, they're keeping the culture going, so, you know. Every culture should still be doing that, you know, whether you're Irish or Sweden or, you know, British or, you know, on this day, you know, Columbus never landed in America. He landed in the Caribbean, but they said he discovered America, you know, so I'll be uh, happy if they got rid of uh, Columbus Day altogether in the whole country, because he never discovered America. and. Uh, he went home and told the Pope, so the Pope went and uh, did that uh, decree of discovery where they said the uh, local natives, they found a new land that the natives didn't believe in the Bible, they didn't uh, worship Jesus, 
didn't speak English. So the Pope said they had the right to come and enslave us, take our riches. And after that, they came up with another clause to keep moving west, taking over all our land. They passed another uh, something called, uh, uh, what was that, they stole land after they couldn't use the discovery of decree anymore. They, they used uh, something like, uh, ah, they slip my mind here, uh, eminent domain. Yeah, where they said, uh, even though you, you have a land, if Congress wants to put a railroad track there or a pipeline, they can just give you money and do it, you know. So, you know, I would like to make people aware of all those clauses. There's one more clause, too, that they uh, use the Oklahoma land rush with, too. I forgot what that one was called. But, uh, uh, can I ask you, uh, what do you think should be done with what was used to be known as the Six Grandfathers and is now uh, Mount Rushmore. What is your opinion on that situation? Well, uh, my opinion is bec uh, they, they put it up there because, you know, they conquered us and they, they put that up there just like uh, reminding us that, you know, we're under them, you know. And uh, back home, the local natives didn't want... Uh, President Trump up to that time, that 4th of July, that, uh, where he said he wanted his uh, pro profile, yeah, 2016, where he, they wanted his uh, pro profile carved on her. Local Indians didn't like that at all, and they protested it, and uh, my, my daughter went to jail for that, too. And she, she was on a national newspaper. So I'm proud of her, for, and I'm proud of all the young people. And for our final remarks, please... Put your hands together for one of our founders here and the one who put this wonderful and beautiful event together, Mabel Nigaretti. Thank you, <laughs> Miguel. Um, well, I am humble actually to be here because there's so many beautiful people that made this event um, a reality. Oof. And, um, and so many people also came from different places as far as Canada, Oklahoma, all the way through Pine Ridge uh, to bless us uh, for this day because it's so important. And um, from my bottom of my heart, and I hope the prayers and the convocations, you know, the, that came from the elders earlier today, Eugene, comes a reality. Also, I'm so proud of also the Mechicas, um, because even though they come from very far away in terms of relationship to where we at in Napehokin, um, they keep the fire going in this very same place. So every day we're sort of praying, you know, together, even though the different relatives are far away or they have to take, you know, a long trip to get here. And then also I'm thankful for all everybody who supports this effort. Um, and in that sense also, I'm so thankful for the relatives who kept also the fight of making indigenous people space for what it is now which is, I want to thank the elders here on my right, over here, <laughs> everybody's sitting. Uh, they took a long, long time. It was a long fight, but it's coming together and it's bringing a lot of the communities together as well. So in some ways, it's a healing process for us. It's also a, a statement to the city that we're gonna be here for a long time and we're not going anywhere. Uh, or at least we're going to pass on the torch to the next generation. And that's really what I would like to see that we can do together. And I'm so happy that also the Lenape are here because it makes a difference. Without you, this wouldn't be, you know, what it is. So uh, without further ado, I just want to say thank you again. Enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. There's a lot of snacks that we have for everybody. So go ahead and get some before you go. Uh, and then for, uh, please uh, take a moment also of like help the vendors who are here um, and just have a good day and talk to me like, from the bottom of heart. Thank you.
I see you next year, uh, <laughs> and around, <laughs> and every day. <laughs> if y'all feeling good, say I'm feeling good. Y'all enjoy the full moon last night. Let's go, y'all. Get some movement in your body. Can I get some movement? Don't be shy. Say, let's get free. Come on, get free. Say, I feel good. Say, I feel right. Let's get free. Let's get right. Sacred sights. Treaty rights. Say, I, 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 I. I am alive. Hey, I am Tiger, and you're with the Oglala Nation, the Oglala Lakota Nation. No, actually, I'm not. I'm just here. Uh, I had an opportunity to sell some of my things. I'm Pawnee and Seminole. Those are my two tribes. But the relative here, the elder from the Oglala Lakota, uh, let me sit here and uh, you know make a little extra spending money here, selling some uh, necklaces, and uh, also I was able to perform here today. How did it feel? I, I enjoy it. You know, it's just an opportunity for me to utilize, you know, that. One gift, you know, just to inspire, encourage, and, you know, just spread the message, you know, that I've always, you know, spread in regards to indigenous movement, solidarity, spirituality, uh, cultural activism. And uh, so what does Indigenous People Day, People's Day mean to you? Indigenous People's Day for me is every day, you know, every day. Every day I wake up, man, uh, we're thriving, and, you know, we come from surviving. And we're moving into the future spiritually. Uh, for me, that's what I believe. Uh, just thankful for my ancestors and all creations around us, you know, life, you know, the water, earth, and all the things in between, and all the things surrounding us and things we're standing on. So I just love it, you know. Indigenous Peoples Day celebration, it's good to have an event where people can come and fellowship and just come together and, you know, celebrate amongst others who believe that same, you know, uh, have that same feeling for it. Um, but, you know, just thankful to be here, man, as a native, you know, still here representing my family, my tribe. Uh, what, did, what do you think about Columbus and Columbus Day? I mean, I've never celebrated Columbus Day, never cared for Columbus. Um, but as a native, um, growing up, we, we've always suffered the oppression. We always got the short end of the stick, you know, never have been recognized a lot. A lot of that changed years ago when Natives started to to become empowered, educated, and, and, and moving in this system, uh, uh, utilizing our sovereignty. Sovereignty is a big part of it. We have sovereignty because our ancestors fought for that. Our ancestors died for that. You know, our status is political because we, we fought this government in wars, you know? In those wars, uh, the root of those wars, obviously, is you know Columbus. You know that's there, there's there's a beginning to everything, and so you know I don't care for Columbus. Um, statues are coming down all over the country, and you know he's one of them that's probably going to come down as well. But I do know that people hold him in high regard. You know, uh, mostly you know Caucasian people. Uh, that's their history. 
we don't share the same history and and that's that's okay that's life but for me as an indigenous person you know i i follow the teachings of my people and my beliefs any other general thoughts you'd like to share with us before we say goodbye Man, Indigenous Peoples Day, you know, it's happening all over the country. It's good to see our native people, you know, uh, uh, building up this uh, cultural infrastructure, you know, to reach out to people, to help people. Um, the main thing is we can't be like the colonizers. The colonizers' greatest weapon was to divide our people. And whenever we start dividing amongst our own people and destroying our own people, the enemy has nothing to do because we do it to ourselves. And that's one of the, the tools that, that I hope uh, our indigenous people can get rid of, you know, empower each other, lift each other up, man. Let's build each other up. You know, yeah, some of our tribes, we come from warring tribes, you know, we natives warred against other natives. But now we can come together under that all we scald to Chakusu and become one. I hope. Uh, and any chance we can get a, a quick freestyle? Let's see. When I sit with my pen and pad and my cedar and sage, dropping this world upon life as I turn this page of life being a native, but a stranger in your own land is something that I just don't understand. We were forced from our homes when our population diminished. They wanted to exterminate the Indian and make the Indian finished. We used to roam the plains freely, the mountains and the canyons, the desert swamps coastline until the Eastern man landed. A Bible in one hand, a rifle in another, saying thou shall believe what we do or die like your brother. Forced religion, forced ways, forced out of our Land, but not forced without a fight every woman and man but then women elders and children were massacred protecting each other when the soldiers ambushed while the warriors were away talking peace with the government but that's how they were they always had the broken covenant these are the tales of fears that you don't learn in school but i felt for years these trails of tears run parallel to my dirt road but it hurts though knowing the struggle of my people carried over to this 2022 sequel but it's okay because we survive all clans, nations, and tribes, and together we can stand as one. Because we lasted through oppression and last stands. We fought too long and hard to die by our own hands. We once moved like the wind and walked a spiritual path. Though minorities are minorities, we still know how to laugh. From genocide, boarding schools, and third world reservations, may those who don't know start the reconciliation. A whole fire. Thank you very much.
Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to further support the local news, follow the link in the description of the Patreon, where you can get exclusive access to exclusive content and other very exclusive things.